The year 2022 had its fair share of protests and demonstrations. Unfortunately, some of these protests needlessly took lives. It was a year of back-to-back -back protests and demonstrations that started off in February. Personnel of the Nation Builders Corps program, NAPCO, were on the streets over and paid allowances. <laughs> In March at Formina, protests about an alleged imposition of former NPP MP and now second deputy speaker Andrew Isiama on party faithfuls led to a protest that saw the NPP party office repainted by angry members into the colors of the NDC. And while the nation was about to get over the shock of that incident, the police for three straight months stole the spotlight. In April, a clash between youth in Akachi and the police left two with gunshot injuries. The protests that turned into the bloody clash was at the back of an alleged police rundown of three young men on a motorbike that resulted in the death of one of the passengers. Next was when residents of Nkranza poured onto the streets over another alleged police murder. The residents claimed a 28-year-old man picked by the police died in their custody when one person lost his life in the clash that also saw the destruction of the police station and the suspension of police services. And you would think that that will be the last time a police mishap would result in the death of individuals. But another month later, you see a group of police officers deployed to a protest at the Islamic SHS over a dangerous highway crossing 10 bloody. <laughs> the rippling effect of Russia's attack in Ukraine in February will start being felt in Ghana by mid-year. In July, Leader of Government Business in Parliament and Majority Leader Oseiche Mensabuntu was hurriedly escorted amidst hooting by angry artisans chanting war songs to register their displeasure over what they described as a lack of infrastructural development in his constituency. It was little surprise when Arise Ghana decided to hit the streets in a major protest. The two-day event, particularly the first day, will continue to remain in the history books of the Fourth Republic and well beyond it. The police and demonstrators clashed for more than two hours over a decision to picket at the Jubilee House. It was a turn of civil society groups having continuously raised concern over the wanton dissipation of Ghana's resources and the refusal of the Auditor General to use his powers of disallowances and surcharges hit the streets. The action yielded results with the AG requesting a meeting and assuring to stamp his authority. This can't continue as of now in Ghana. The situation is so dire that the best thing is for President Kufado to take responsibility and to resign with his vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And just like that, another protest was planned after private legal practitioner amidst the rising calls for the removal of Ken Oforiata demanded the resignation of the entire government. And so on November 5, Ghanaians in their hundreds poured onto the streets of the capital again with a Kumipreko reloaded demonstration. The president has stayed on along with all members of cabinet, but it was at the expense of another anti-government protest with international recognition. Political science lecturer Professor Edward Brenya believes the consciousness of the Ghanaian is beginning to come alive. The citizens, the people that vote, are discerning. And every year, the sort of thoughts or perception that we have from voters is changing. 
these voters are now taking more active part. Of course, it's not strange because they were advised by the president at his inauguration to be citizens by no spectators. And true to that, people are citizens. People are taking active part in things that affect them. Why do we elect leaders? We elect leaders because we want them to champion development. We want them to protect our security. With the economic situation not dying down, the Ghana Union of Traders Association shut down their shops over inflation hikes. Valco workers also demanded for their overaged bosses to go. Demonstrations remain an active tool for citizens to make known their angst against the government. If 2022 was anything to go by, many more Ghanaians will reserve the right to let their voices be heard with even more difficult times projected by experts in 2023. Trust, however, that wherever it may be, we here at Media General will have it covered in preserving history for the many generations yet to come. The police is assisting in cleaning the wounds. That's what's happening. The crowd is being dispersed. Tear gas is being fired now, close to us now. As this individual who has blood oozing from his head is arrested by the police. I don't know if he's been arrested, but he's been escorted by the police.